Shalom, shalom, and greetings from Teshua Community. I am Ima Rafaya, and we're back with you all this evening with another word of encouragement, strength only to the daughters of Tzion. But before I begin, we'd like our young people to give you a selection written by my daughter, Aho Sakia. Except Yahweh built the house, they labor in vain to build it. Except Yahweh keep the city, the wise men wait your blood in vain. Except Yahweh built the house, they labor in vain to build it. Except Yahweh keep the city, the wise men wait your blood in vain. we think we know what the word reverence means. The beauty of the wisdom and the treasure that the word reverence grants to a husband. And over the years I thought I really knew how to reverence my ish but it has only taken me years to understand according to the Torah how I am supposed to reverence my husband. And I told a Yah for the scriptures that I have learned over these years that I can reverence and honor my ish. And we as women of color, we've fallen off the bandwagon of how to reverence our husband because we've let society dictate to us what reverence is. And our uh, if he doesn't meet up to our expectation, then we shouldn't reverence or honor him. But according to the Torah, we should reverence our ish. Hallelujah. So let me give you a scripture verse, and it's coming from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. It says, however, let every one of you in particular, so Ahava, his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. So as the man learns how to love himself by obeying the Torah truth, he will honor and reverence Almighty Yahweh, and he will know how to love his wife. And it didn't say wife love your husband, but it says reverence him. And you know how you do that, daughter? By honoring him, by obeying him, by respecting him at all times. For he is the head. And if you're walking in Torah truth, you're striving daily to do that which is pleasing before Almighty Yah. You can seek him, and he'll show you one day at a time how to reverence your ish. The word reverence, what does it really mean? It's a feeling of profound and respect with a pure Ahava. Did you hear me do this? It's a pure Ahava. It's an honor, a deep attitude of respect. An outward manifestation 
a feeling of reverence, manifested in gesture of deep honor and respect. And over these years, daughters, you want the approval of Almighty Yahweh. When I came to the knowledge of the truth, there were many things that I did not do that were pleasing to Torah. So as I learned the Torah and learned the commandments of Almighty Yah, I had to shoot. I had to change the way that I thought. I had to change the way that I dressed. And can I tell you, I wanted the approval of Almighty Yah. And as I was to seek his approval of doing that which was right according to his commandments, I learned how to reverence my ish. And my gestures, when he would come home from work, even before I would speak, I would be so happy to see him. When he would come home, the house would be clean, the dinner would be prepared. Sometimes I would even run his bath where I wanted everything to be right because I wanted his approval of being a tough wife. And we want the approval of Almighty Yahweh as being a tough daughter of Tazion. And when you are a tough daughter of Tazion, and you desire an itch, you should desire an itch. Not a boyfriend, but you should desire an itch, a husband man. And as you clean up your actions, your deeds, your ways, y'all will send you a righteous man that walks in Torah truth. The word reverence, it means adoration, devotion, esteem, loyalty, approval, honor. These seven things are the components of reverence. They're the seven components of reverence. And you, you, got, you can't have, leave off one, you can't leave off two, you must have them all. So if Yah grants you a man of Yah that's striving like you are to obey Torah truth, you must reverence him. And when you learn to reverence him, you will truly know how to love your ish. What are the, what are the actions of a loyal Isha? What are your actions? Well, I want to go to Sharad, chapter 26, verse 2. And it reads, it says, a virtuous, loyal wife. She rejoices her ish, and he will be complete in years of shalom. When you truly reverence your ish, do it when you truly do it righteously, he will always be in shalom. You won't ever have to worry about shaming him or him shaming you because you want to have the approval of Almighty Yah. If you don't want to have the approval of Yah, why even walk this way? Hallelujah. So as a loyal wife, she's virtuous in her actions, her thoughts. Can I tell you, even when she opens her mouth, she will speak words of wisdom to bring strength to her age. That's what a wife is. She's a strength to the man. And as we, the women of color, we should. Our men have been torn down all their lives from generation to generation. And can I tell you, in the late 60s, the early 70s, I saw how society and the government has told, told women they didn't need a man. We'll give you an allotment once a month. You can have all the babies you want. But what is, you can't raise your children without a husband. So you need a man in your child. Even daughters need a father in their lives. So they can see how the man caress and love and care for his wife. So that's why we need a man. Can I tell you, I told a Yah that over these years he has given me a man of Yah in my life to lead and guide me down this narrow path of righteousness. I have shalom in my home. I have shalom in my mind. Can I tell you, daughters, I can be happy, happy every day because I've been made free by this living toward truth. And you can be made free also by just obeying this truth. Hallelujah. Um, what are the tenets and expression of a loyal issue? Her faithfulness to her oath, her commitment 
to her husband, her, her alliance to her husband. It's a great fidelity to her husband. And you can't, you must do this complete in truth. Hallelujah. So as scripture expresses, we want to go to Maccabees chapter 7 and verse 7. And this is just giving us instruction on being a loyal wife. <clears throat> a man in harmony with the Torah and wise one of Yahweh's life. Verse 8. Such should be those who are administrators of the Torah, shilling it with their own blood and noble sweat in suffering even to death. And what the scripture is trying to say to, to us is that we should be so committed to this truth that we're willing to lay down our lives for this truth. We won't let no one sway us to the left or to the right. But we stay, stay on the straight and narrow path to this kingdom truth. And if our commitment is unto Almighty Yahweh, we will know how to commit unto an inch. Hallelujah. Second, I mean, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 39. The wife is married by the Torah as long as her husband lives. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will, only in Yahweh, only to those of like Imuna. So as a woman, as she has, <clears throat> as she walks in truth, she's been married to an ish, and he dies, then she is free to marry again, but only to a man that is walking in truth. She has learned by her obedience that I reverence Almighty Yahweh, then I can reverence my ish, and if this one dies, then I'm free to marry again only a man of Imuna, not a man that doesn't know truth. Because if she marries another man and they're unequally yoked, she is going to catch hell. And that's for truth. That is for truth. Hallelujah. Maccabees verse 9. You, Father, strengthen our loyalty to the Torah through your honoring, endurance, and you did not abandon being Kodesh, which you praise, but by your deeds, you made the words of Yahweh doctrine credible. So a father honoring Almighty Yah in his endurance, him not abandoning being set apart, him not abandoning being different than the others, him knowing that by me walking in this complete truth, it brings credibility credibility unto Almighty Yah. So we being followers of this truth, we can't be like the world. We must stand strong. The men must stand strong and the women must stand strong. You can say what you want, Doris. You can't look like the world and say you love Almighty Yah. You can't think like the daughters. You need to go to college to uh, become some kind of entrepreneur. No, you must learn to obey truth, stay in your father and mother's home to someone ask for your hand in marriage. Then when you marry, you learn how to reverence and love your ish and you bring forth children. Can I tell you, when you bring forth children, they will know how to honor and reverence their father. Example, here's an example of a reverence towards her husband as we are towards Almighty Yah. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. And without controversy, great is the mystery of reverence, respect, pity towards Yahweh. Yahweh was manifest in the flesh, justified in the Ru'ah, seen of the Melachim, preached to the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into honor. And this is talking about Yahshua. Yahshua reverencing Almighty Yah in his obedience to the Torah. He suffered many things, daughters. Yahshua HaMashiach 
suffered many things, and he was done wrongfully, but he didn't abandon Almighty Yah. And he wanted to be proven, approved of, by Almighty Yah in his obedience. Reverence is respect. And we're going to see how Saul, hallelujah, respect Almighty Yah. First Titus chapter 1 verse 1. It says, Saul, a servant of Yahweh and a messenger of Yahshua HaMashiach, according to the Imunah of Yahweh's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after being reverence, respect, pity towards Yahweh. An example, a, a loyalty of reverence will restore and make an ish whole. Daughter, I don't care what your ish is going through. When you truly know how to reverence him, when he's going through trials and tribulations, he will be able to stand strong because of your obedience to Torah, your words of wisdom, your encouraging words to tell him to go on, honey. There's nothing we can't do through Yahshua, Hamashiach. Acts chapter 3, verse 12. And when Kepha saw it, he answered to the people, You men of Israel, why marvel you at this? Or why look you so earnestly, intently on us, as though by our own power, or being reverence, respect, pity towards Yahweh, we have made this man to walk? So here's Kepha saying, my commitment unto Almighty Yah has given me this power of prayer to pray for this man. And this man was able to walk. So by our obedience, daughter, by our obedience to this Torah truth, will give strength, life, healing to your ish. Titus chapter 1 verse 5. It says, for this cause... Let I you increase that you should set in order the things that are not done and ordain elders in every city as I have appointed you. Verse 6. If anyone is blameless, the husband of one wife, having faithful, loyal children, not accused of riot or unruly. So Titus here he had to set men over many cities. Hallelujah. And they had to be men of strength with wives that reverence the ish. Their children couldn't be unruly. So really everything falls back really into the hands of the wife. If she studied the Torah daily, prayed and seeking Almighty Yah, obeying all the commandments of Almighty Yah, knowing how to reverence her husband, then her children would not be unruly. You know, I share with our daughters all the time how we must read the Torah in our homes and we must discipline our children according to the Torah. I know we've learned as these new ages, they think, well, you're not supposed to, you know, discipline your children. Oh, that's child abuse. Well, then the Torah is a lie then. Because the Torah does tell us to take a rod and you spank your child, you beat them beat times, and you don't spare them for their crying. Because they are going to cry. Because they say, if I start crying real loud, well, then mommy won't spank me. And I can continue to do what I want to do. Well, Torah say you correct that child. If you don't correct your children, daughters, they'll grow up to be adult heathens. So as we learn this Torah, we must apply it to our lives. We don't just pick and choose what we think is right or what we like. We must obey the whole book. I know people tell you it can't be done, but I've been young and now I'm old, and I know that it can be done. Living in a community setting the way we do daughters, you can do it right. You don't have the pressures of the world. You don't have this one telling you to go that way, that one te telling you to go that way. We stay on the straight and narrow path. It's narrow. There's no room to turn around. There's no, you can't even back up. You have to stay on a straight and narrow path, doing that which is righteous, Sadiq, 
set apart in Almighty Yah. Faithful daughters always show their kindness. And you say, well, how do I do that? Let's go to Acts chapter 16, verse 14. And a certain Ishar named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Titira, which reverence Yahweh, heard us, whose heart Yah opened, that she attend to the things which was spoken of Saul. Verse 15. And when she saw, I'm sorry, and when she was immersed in her whole household, she was besought us, saying, If you have judged me to be a faithful daughter of Yahweh, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained them and she urged them to come into her home. She wanted to wait on the men of Yah. She wanted to be a blessing unto them. They knew she wasn't a <clears throat> she was a woman of Imuna, and she had learned the ways of Almighty Yah. She reverenced Almighty Yah, and she was able to know that, that truly these are men of, Alma, of Almighty Yah, and they're welcome to come into my home and to a bow. I won't get out of place. I won't see if I can dress skimpy in front of them. I will cover myself in righteous garments, and I will bless these men. Of all my an Ishal that truly reverence her husband. She's a faithful friend. That means she will be a strength to her ish in times of trouble. I want to go to Shirak chapter 6, verse 14. It says, A faithful friend is a strong defense. He that has found true. A true friend has found a treasure. And can I tell you, daughters of design, you don't have to have 50 friends. You don't have to have 10 friends. If you could just find Uno, just that one friend, that's all that's needed. A faithful friend will tell you the truth. A faithful friend will pray with you. A faithful friend will fast with you. And they won't get weary in telling you the truth or in well doing. So if you just have Uno, that one faithful friend, that's what an issue is. Verse 15, there is nothing so precious as a faithful friend, and no scale can measure her excellence, and her excellence is invaluable. A faithful friend is an aromatic of life, and they that fear Yahweh shall find that one faithful friend. So when you are committed to Almighty Yahweh, and you're striving diligently every day to please Him, Yahweh will send you that faithful friend. It doesn't really have to be an ish. It can just be another daughter of to Zion. Hallelujah. And once you've found that faithful friend, they will be honest with you at all times. If you have to say that you have a friend and they're not truthful with you, they're not faithful with you about anything, that's not a true friend. Like I said, if y'all only give you one, you are truly Barak of Almighty Yah. And that's what Yah is just saying to us right here, is that that's what a true wife is. She's a faithful, kind, compassionate, Faithfulness is expressed in fidelity, assurance, conviction, trust in, confidence, trustfulness, firmly persuaded by her ahava. When you truly have a faithful friend, they will love at all times. Hallelujah. They're confident in the words that you speak to them are words of strength. They're not they're assured in their walk in truth, and we must be that way also. I want to go to Sharat chapter 1, verse 26. It says, If you desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and Yahweh shall give them to you. You must desire it. 
Can I tell you, wisdom is just not going to fall out of the Shemaya. You must seek for this wisdom. You must have a strong desire, and you must get on your knees before Yah and ask for it. For the fear of Yahweh is wisdom and instruction, and his delights or fidelity and meekness. So, daughters, once you come to Almighty Yah, there's a commitment. You must learn how to humble yourself. You being bold, speaking your mind doesn't mean anything. You can find that all day long from women. All day long. But a humble woman, a humble daughter of Zion, she will know when to speak and when not to speak. She will learn how not to be seen. You don't need to be seen. You don't need the world's approval. Hallelujah. You only want the approval of Almighty God. Uno. The only one. Hallelujah. Fidelity is being steadfast, firm, security, with no fears. The Ishaw must know, without a shadow of a doubt, that we can do all things through Yahshua HaMashiach. If any be sick among you, call for the elders. So if her husband, her, her ish is away, and one of her children falls sick, you call for the elders first. You know elders that have tough report, that are walking and keeping the commandments of Almighty Yahweh. You flee and you get there. You anoint the child with oil. They lay hands on the child pray for the child. That's what a true daughter that is steadfast and secure in Yahshua HaMashiach. Let me show you one in the Torah. She's steadfast, unmovable, and she was blessed of Almighty Yah. We're going to go to the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 8. And Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each to her mother's house. Yahweh deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. Verse 9. Yahweh grant you that you may find rest, each of you, in the house of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice, and they went. They were sorry. Sorrowful because their husbands were deceased. Verse 10. And they said to Naomi, Surely we will return with you to your people. Verse 11. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. While will you go with me? I have nothing for you. I have no more sons to, in my womb to give you. Turn again, my daughters. Go your way. For I am too old to have a an husband. If I should say, I have Tigba, if I should have a husband also tonight and should also bear sons, would you wait for them that long until they're grown? She said, Nay, my daughters, for it grieves me much for your sake that the hand of Yahweh is gone out against me. I am old now, stricken in age. I have no more sons I can give you. And they lifted up their voices and they wept again. And Oprah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her mother-in-law. Oprah stays behind, but Ruth goes with Naomi. Verse 15. And when she said, Behold, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return you after your sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Do not urge me to leave you or to return from following after you. And were you large, I will go. Your people shall be my people and your Yahweh shall be my Yahweh. Where you die, I will die. And there will I be buried, Yahweh do so to me. And more also, if anything but death separate you and me. Now here is 
a faithful daughter of Tazaria that truly knows how to reverence Omar Iyam. She had an ish, she knew how to reverence him, and can I tell you, the reverence just didn't disappear. She held on to reverence. She even reverenced her mother. She didn't go out, she didn't become wanting, start looking for a man to take care of her. She wanted to stand by her mother-in-law because her mother-in-law was old. And she had nowhere to go. So what do you do if your husband dies, you, you're living with your mother-in-law, you just put her away? She didn't have a nursing home she could put her in. So by her commitment unto Almighty God, Ruth did that which was righteous. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 7 and 36. But if any man think that he behaves himself improperly towards his virgin, if she is past the age, marriage age, and if need requires marriage, let him do what he desires. His sins not. Let them marry. Verse 7. I mean verse 37. But if he that stands steadfast in his land, having no necessity for marriage, but has power over his own will, and has so decreed in his land that he will keep his virgin, does well. Verse 38. So then, he that gives her in marriage does well, but he that gives her not in marriage does better. What it's saying here, daughters, is that you can serve Almighty Yah very well and learn how to obey Him without having an ish. Because once you get an ish, it's like you have double duty. You must learn to obey Yah and you must learn to reverence your husband and then you take on other things. You've got to keep the home clean. You've got to cook for him. There are times you, you must be intimate. So when you're serving Almighty Yah without an ish, you can be at Shalom. And you can just focus on how to please Almighty Yah. But if you choose not or you can't wait, then marry. Mar no, it didn't say commit a fornication. It says you, you can marry. So marry. Daughters of Tazan should not sleep around. You should not. You should marry. Because once you start sleeping around, the next, the next thing that is going to happen, you're going to bring forth seed, which is out of the will of Yah. So you want to stay in the will of Yah by marrying. And when you marry, you're going to have to learn how to reverence your ish. And you have to understand the ways of Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. It says, but the wife is bound by the Torah as long as her husband lives. But if her husband is dead, she is at liberty to marry to whom she will only in Yahweh. Verse 40. But she is happier if she remains unmarried. After my judgments, and I think also that I have the Ruah of Almighty Yah. So here it is saying that once you learn, daughters, the commandments and obeying the Torah truth, once you learn how to do that, then it will become easy for you to marry an ish. Sometimes we get in a hurry, we got to have a husband, we got to get, have a an husband, and we haven't learned how to bring this flesh under subjection. Study to be quiet. Your husband is his place to correct you. So if your husband tell you to shut up, are you going to be mad for a whole week? I don't want to hear that right now. Go shut up. I'll get back with you later. The first thing you're going to do is get an attitude. You haven't learned how to bring your members under subjection. So if you learn the disciplines of Almighty Yah first, then you will know how to truly reverence a husband. Wisdom would teach you the beauty of steadfastness daughters, especially you that are unmarried. I want to go to Wisdom chapter 7 verse 22. For wisdom 
which is the worker of all things, taught me. For in her is an understanding ru'ah, ha kadush, one only, manifold, subtle, lively, clear, undefiled, plain, not subject to hurt, loving the things that is tough and quick, which cannot be let slit, ready to do tough. So wisdom teaches us, daughters, how to govern the ru'ah, how, to, how not to be quick in judgment, how to learn to be lively, clear in your thinking, knowing when to speak, when not to speak, and how to govern your Ru'ah, HaKadosh, at all times. You say, well, she, he said something to make me angry, or she said something to make me mad, so I'm going to be mad all day. You should never let your Ru'ah be mad all day, if you are true. If you find yourself in that situation, the first thing you should do is get on your knees and ask Yah to give you strength to overcome. The righteous must always overcome. Because in the hour that we think not, Yahshua shall return. So you want to be right because you don't want to die in that state. Being angry or mad at someone because they said something to you. You want to be in the right state at all times. Hallelujah. Want to go to Wisdom, chapter 7, verse 23. It says, Kind to man, steadfast, sure, free from care, having all power, overseeing all things, and going through all understanding, pure, and most subtle, subtle, ruah. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. She passes and goes through all things by reason of her pureness. The wisdom of Almighty Yah is unspotted from the world doors. And as you learn this truth, as it makes you free, free from your unclean thoughts, from your unclean deeds, this wisdom will help you to operate in this way. Steadfast, sure, free, care, careful in all the things that you do, hallelujah, and you'll be happy, not once a month, not once a week, you'll be happy every day. There will be trials in your life, but can I tell your daughters, you can overcome every trial in your life through Yahshua HaMashiach. Daughters, we're going to end this session about reverence. I hope that it bless someone's nephesh today. Yah Barak, you all. We'll be back with you on next week. I'm going to show you, daughters, how to cook greens. I know people say you got to have pork in your greens. Well, y'all said that's unclean. So I'm going to show you, daughters, how to prepare fresh greens from our garden to co-dash and set apart away. Much a harvest to you all and all the daughters of Teshua community send you greetings and much a harvest in Yahshua HaMashiach. Yahweh Baruch you all. Shalom, shalom.